Okay, so I started this video absolutely out of nowhere, just picked up my camera, no introduction. So here's the introduction. But last year, I started and finished the entire Addicted slash Callaway Sister series by Kristen Becker Ritchie, which means that I'm literally insane, but it also changed my life. Amazing, gorgeous, show-stopping, never be the same. So I randomly, impulsively decided that I wanted to try rereading this entire book series and vlog the entire thing for you guys, spoilers and everything. Actually, it starts with me binge reading it, and then it ends with just me gushing over Daisy and Reich and thirsting over Reich Meadows, the hottest man to ever exist. Literally click off if you are a Daisy and Reich hater also i do mildly slightly aggressively slander lauren hale so if you don't want to see that also click off anyway well that's my life <laughs> sorry okay let's begin <laughs> Oh, um, okay i may or may not have decided to embark on something could it be something stupid yes is it something impulsive absolutely it's 6 p.m and i decided to start a whole new reading vlog that's gonna be binge reading the entire addicted calloway sister series i've been living under a rock and don't know what this book series is it's literally like an experience like disney world experience like this is the addicted calloway sisters experience it's basically this book series that follows three sisters and each of them have like their own romances and the alternative found family and you literally follow them throughout their entire 20s you follow all the couples the couple that started it all lily and lo childhood best friends they've been fake dating because they're both suffering from their addiction lo has an alcohol addiction, Lily has a sex addiction, then it's them overcoming that and just the relationship growth and the character growth. Like, so the reading vlog starts now. Oh my gosh, wait, literally look at my Kindle. It's this book series. And then these are literally there for the three sisters, Lily, Rose, Daisy. The lighting of this and the angle makes me look like I'm your sleep paralysis demon. Oh my god, there's 10 books in the series. Technically, there's two separate series. So technically, there is more than one like reading order, but I think that there's one right one, which is publication order. I think we're finally ready with the first book addicted to you now to my memory this was probably the worst one in the series in my opinion you need to get through the first one i had to try reading this book maybe three or four times before i could finally get through it because you obviously don't have an attachment to any of these characters cheekbones that cut like ice and eyes like liquid scotch lauren hill's an alcoholic beverage and he doesn't even know it all six foot two of him fills the doorway the way that he's the shortest one out of the core six men and he's six two i've been very public about the fact that lily and lo are not my favorite couple in the series they're like my, probably my least favorite one why do i feel like doing this reread is gonna give me a new appreciation for them like now that i know where they end up i'm at the part where rose is like visiting them for the first time if you guys know what happens before i can't explain it i'm gonna get demonetized i just don't understand every single time that lo is enabling her i don't know like i feel like it's one thing to like i guess like not do anything actively to try to help but like he's like teasing her i'm like why is he doing this why are you doing that you know she has a problem <laughs> now it's like the day after and they have to go to daisy's luncheon I don't know, rich people think they casually just drop like their biggest fears about each other's addictions and it's like so terrible. Like in the beginning, I think Lo said like he doesn't like her going to frat houses because he's scared that she's gonna get and then even now she's like, oh, one of these days like Lo might not wake up. Like he might die from his alcohol addiction. Like, okay, they're at the luncheon now. We finally get to see all the calorie sisters together. And the way that everyone is just like riding around town with drivers, like they have hired drivers. As I'm reading this, I'm just like, I hate you i think and daisy's here she's 15 wow little did i know when i first started reading this book that she would be the bitch that i love the most in this series i cannot wait to meet the other boys i'm literally so excited oh my god i forgot about this scene that happens i actually can't read it it's when oh legend has it that people are still recovering from secondhand embarrassment to this day it's when lily is in lecture and the horn starts playing out loud from her laptop and she can't turn it off <laughs> if this happened to me i would change my name and then fly to indonesia no way i'm ever showing up to school showing my face anywhere in this country ever again after something like that this time around i actually want to keep track of the guys that daisy dates before she meets right because the first time i read the series i disregarded them they're just men. But then turns out as I read the series that they kept calling back her ex-boyfriends like by name and I had no idea who these boys were. But this time around, I'm gonna try to remember the first one. is someone named Josh. He's been dating for six months. No one knew about him. Oh my God, this is the first flashback that we get of young Lillian Lowe. Okay, now that I'm looking back at this though, like their first time was kind of messed up too, I feel like. He was just abused by his father and she was trying to comfort him in the only way she knew how to comfort him. And they ended up sleeping together. I sprawled out on the couch making a promise with myself to never sleep with Lauren Hill ever again. Um, he's actually pissing me off so bad. He literally uses sex against her all the time and it's so infuriating to me. And now Lily's finally standing up for herself because he just did it again and she's like about to toss all this alcohol and she's like, how's what I'm doing any different than what you're doing to me? Like, you know people say that they're like in a codependent relationship? Like, I hear that a lot. I think it's true because not only are they the only people who know about each other's addiction, but they're also the only friends that each other have in their lives. Like, they've pushed every single person out in their life. They have no close 
close friends, no relationships that they could depend on for support, if not each other. Every single time that he's using her addiction against her, it's because he is secretly bitter about the fact that she will sleep with everyone except for him. The fact that she's drawn a boundary of like, I'm never gonna sleep with Lo, is making him mad. That's like pissing me. I'm like, come on now. Like, be so for real. You're a grown man. He's like, oh, I'm sorry that you can't handle being touched by me. Sorry that the very thought being with me disgusts you. This isn't about you. Like, this isn't about you. Oh my god. They're disgustingly rich, so they're on a trip to the Bahamas. Lily wants to go have sex with like one of the workers on the ship. And I was like reading this and I was like, something is about to happen. Like I recall something, something significant about this random man on the boat. I was trying to remember what it was. This is either the moment where Lo is like sleep with me or it's the moment where they finally confess their feelings for each other. I literally forget. Lo says, I'm clearly an option and yet you still can't ask me. I don't get it. Am I that revolting to you? And Lily is so shocked. How is she so shocked? There's no way that Lo would ever want to sleep with me. Be so for real. And then Lily says, I'm not going to use you like I do these other guys. Lo thinks that Lily hates him. And then she says, I didn't know you wanted to. You never said anything. And then he says, how the hell could you not know? Literally. They're actually delusional in like the wrong direction. After they've hooked up, Lo is like kind of explaining the reason that he would like tease her like that was because he was always hoping she would want to sleep with him, but he would only ever do it if she asked him because he didn't want her to think that he was just another guy who was like abusing her addiction. But like, make it make sense. Like you were. Wait a second. I wanted it, but on your terms. That, that's not her terms. If you're teasing her like that and holding it against her, like that's not. Oh no, he's just a man. Yes, the tutor. Enter. Connor Cobalt. And here's another thread that I want to keep track of while I read the series, which is the whole Connor sexuality plot thread. When I first read the series, I was confused. They basically talk about how Connor is hot and gets hit on by a lot of girls. But he's like never reciprocated or like engaged in any of it. That's why Lily goes, are you gay? He shakes his head. Girls, definitely girls, but you're not my type. I like someone who can intellectually spar with me. He says no. So was he lying? I guess he didn't really say no. He just said girls, definitely girls, which is true because he does like girls, obviously. I don't know if he was just like skirting around the matter, obviously because Loki, they're strangers, they've never met. But I think in one of the later books, it says that he knew that he liked boys from a younger age. Or like maybe he's still like in denial. What is happening with that? Guys, it's Halloween party time. Loki, this chapter is the entire reason why I wanted to reread this book. Oh, it's here. The freaking Ninja Turtle fight. Tall, tan guy jogs over to us. I recognize him as the green clad superhero from the sideline. Reich stands a good inch above low, probably six foot three, and carries himself with that extra assurance, exuding a strong sense of masculinity. Reich doesn't like Lily. They don't like each other. But something about Reich throws her off, and Reich doesn't like Lily because of the fact that she's enabling Lo's alcoholism, and he cares about Lo more than he cares about Lily because he's the only one who knows that Lo is his brother. And then Rose doesn't like Lo because Rose thinks that Lo is the reason why Lily is being disconnected from the family and Lo doesn't like Rose because he's a jerk wait the way that Lily's so mean talking to Reich and Reich is always asking about Lo and she's literally like do you have a crush on him we're gonna see the first Rose Connor interaction because Rose showed up I said this before but I don't like the fact that both of them have like history with each other that we never got to see happen unfold he says you could go out with me tonight and everyone's like what oh my gosh i remember this scene this is such a good scene i have tickets to the tempest why take me she asked you know everyone true but that's not the company i feel like sharing tonight i'd rather take you a beautiful intelligent girl from princeton takes one more step officially inches from her the closest i've seen her to a man or child in a long long time he takes out his wallet and hands her the ticket rose barely glances at them since connor has infiltrated her safe space reads all heavy and her cheeks start to flush all oh, my sister's actually affected by the guy listen they really got me with that actually low-key but i forgot what the inciting incident is that actually makes them like go to rehab and it's the fact that lily literally gets assaulted at this club and then gets saved by Reich and Connor while Lo is drunk at the bar. The big confrontation happened. They fessed up. What I'm learning from this whole experience is that Connor and Reich are actually the motherfucking goats. If them two did not get involved, they were the ones who called Rose. None of this would have happened. Like, the way that they actually cared and wanted to do something. I love these men. Lowe's fessing up to his dad because Wright comes along and Jonathan, he's like, what are you doing here? Lowe is like, you know each other? Jonathan is like, you didn't tell him? Everyone's witnessing this like, oh, what's happening between Wright and Lowe's father? Lowe like pulls Wright to the hallway. He's like, what the hell's going on? Tell me right now, who the hell are you? And then Wright is like, listen, like give me a chance to explain. He drops the bomb. Sarah Hale is my mother. I would make Lowe and Wright half brothers. And Lowe is like shooketh and he's like, you're a bastard child. Right 
heart cringes and hurt and he shakes his head once, so terse and pained that a tear flows from his eye. Low points to his own chest with a trembling hand. I'm the bastard. And Reich nods once. We look at Reich's ID and his name is Jonathan Reich Meadows. The way that I was gagged when I read this. So Reich is actually the son of Jonathan and Sarah Hale. Low is the product of that snake Jonathan had an affair. When Jonathan got another woman pregnant, Sarah Hale filed for divorce. Literally everything that Low owned, his bed, his dresser, everything was taken so that Sarah could give it to Reich. And then Low's actual mom was a minor. She walked away from Low. Didn't want to keep him. Now Low is literally in shambles. And that's the end of the first book. We have Low off to rehab. Lily has to fend for herself. 1 a.m. See you in Ricochet. Now this one was the game changer for me because I barely had gotten through Addicted to You. I can probably pinpoint the exact moment when this series had a gorilla grip chokehold on me. This Thrive and Addicted after all, I think those are probably my three favorite ones, but this is probably like my favorite book in the series. I honestly have reread this book so many times, but just my favorite sections which are the Daisy Reich section. We're starting off and they're at Daisy's house party. Is this the party? This is the party, right? This is when it begins. Daisy has long blonde hair as per the start of our Daisy hair development tracking. Oh my gosh, guys, it's happening, it's happening. Lily gets a text from Reich and he's like, I left my wallet at your place. I need you to open the gate. All of the Daisy Reich crumbs in this, I'm eating it up. Daisy's like, something weird just happened. I don't know, dot, dot, dot. Reich texted me. That's her future husband texting her. The absolute love of her life. Texting her for the first time and we just witnessed it. Lily's like, what did he want? And Daisy says, to know what party I was at, I gave him the address. You think he likes me or something? In a later book, they said that Daisy and Wright, they barely met. They just like saw each other at like some family function, but they didn't like actually talk and didn't like actually meet. I just know that Daisy had a big fat crush on Wright the second that she saw him at that family function. That's why she's like, do you think he likes me? Because she secretly has a crush on him like everyone would because look at Reich Meadows. Lily's like, I don't know, Daisy. He's 22 and he's not the kind of guy that would hit on 15 year olds, which is true. Damn, he's 22. He's my age and Daisy's 15. Sometimes I just like erase that in my memory. And then Daisy's like, yeah, I guess, but why would he ask me where I was? I mean, I do look older, Lily, and I make my own money. And then Lily goes, you're still 15, he's still 22. This needs to be squashed right now before he gets here. I cannot have her thinking she has a chance with him. No one wants them to be together. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, right? Reich is actually so hot that it's like physically painful like, and mad. I'm actually mad because this man is fine as hell. Like all he's doing is standing there. Literally all he's doing is standing there. And he has me kicking my feet, giggling like a schoolgirl. And I turn slightly, I find Reich leaning on the wall just as I pictured. His arms are crossed and he scrutinizes me with hard piercing eyes. Brown hair is styled nicely, giving these models a run for their money. He's also slightly unshaven, which makes him appear older and tougher. He's just standing there leaning against the wall. He is literally ink on paper. Am I okay? The little things too, that just shows that he actually cares about the people that he's around. Like little things where like Lily is just like biting her nails. And he like pushes her hand away. Like little things like that. <laughs> Everyone needs to calm down and shut the hell up right now because we have the first Daisy Reich interaction. Reich inspects her with his usual fierce look, eyes flitting from her face to her solo cup. Aren't you underage? Daisy's eyes narrow at him. Are you my father? I don't think you are. He edges in her face a little, taller than her by about four or five inches. And this hoe is 5'11", by the way. She raises her chin, holding her own. You're hilarious, she deadpan. His eyebrows arch. I guess you do know what sarcasm is then. They're so made. This is when I was dialed in when I first read this. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Hold on a damn second. I think that that is like the first time that we've ever seen anyone like really getting to write. Like this man was in love with her. Like Daisy is trying to break up a fight between two grown men. And then Reich comes to like protect her. And he's the one who breaks up the fight instead. One of the guys charges from behind. Reich shoves her out of the way. She falls on her knees while he takes a punch to the jaw. Like he literally took a punch for her. Rose literally just said in front of Connor, I never want to have children. And then cut to the end of this book when they literally have an empire. Wait, did Connor and Rose break up in this book? Wait, I don't remember this happening. I feel like they're also going to get back together in like five seconds. This is Daisy and Reich part two. I don't know what event this is, but it's the event where the mom like sets all the sisters up with random dates. And then Lily gets set up with this man named Aaron, a disgusting boy from her high school. Daisy's like, hey, back off. She has a boyfriend. And then he says to Daisy, do I look like I give a... And then it says, I do, a new voice enters. And this time I internally cheer at the sound of Reich's deep threatening tone. He wears a fitted charcoal suit with a skinny black tie. Brown hair is styled, but he's not clean shaven. Yes! More Daisy Reich content. Is this one they're gonna talk about chocolate cake? I just love how protected Reich is of Lily, even though he like doesn't even like her. Also, he's protective of women in general. Like protective in a way that isn't like cringe alpha male-y. Cause you know I get cringed out so easily. So she gives her a slice of cake to Lily. She's like, I would eat it, but you know. She rolls her eyes and glances at Reich as though they've already had the same conversation. 
situation. You love chocolate, I remind her. And then Daisy says, I love a lot of things I can't have. And I'm gonna just ignore the fact that Reich is obviously provoking a 15 year old girl when he shouldn't be. Daisy and Reich, part three in this book. I remember this. Let's do the Reich fit check. They're basically like going on a boat. Reich wears black wayfarers and leans an arm on the dock's post with such confident nonchalance that the rest of the girls begin to look over, eyeing the cut muscles of his bicep and the ridges seen through his green tank. It's like a herd of lionesses stalking their prey. What are wayfarers? They're literally just sunglasses. And Lily's like, stop doing that. And he's like, I'm just standding here. And she's like, don't stand like that. And he's like, how am I? supposed to stand and she's like i don't know don't lean on things it looks sexual you know i will admit though like what's reg trying to do on this boat right now i know that daisy is like being provocative to him but like he is the old like he should be this man should be cutting that off lily's like look at the whole conversation like <laughs> look what he says lily's like i'd rather everyone stay a thousand feet away from my sister that's what i'd like and then he goes not gonna happen lily she's almost 16 she's already had sex and she's a supermodel and then lily says high fashion and he laughs under his breath whatever she's gorgeous looks older than you and plenty of guys will see that if they haven't already he called her gorgeous dropping gorgeous like that is crazy okay Reich and daisy part four the cliff diving you could have died he growls his eyes narrowing with such anger i would have already cowered back daisy has her shoulders locked tight her head held high resolute we get our first casual drop of the fact that Reich is multilingual. Daisy says, you should be more surprised by the fact that Reich is fluent in Spanish. Daisy, you don't dot dot dot. And then it's like, have a crush on him in her head. She meets my eyes and reads them well. Like you said before, Lily, he's seven years older. She tries to give me a reassuring smile before she breaks from my side and catches up to Cleo, but I'm not satisfied because she glances back at Reich as he peels off his wet shirt and wrings it out. Her eyes split over his body and I see a not so good future. I'm not sure how Lo would react to a Daisy and Reich scenario. All I know is that he wouldn't be happy. Boy, is she right about that. And now we're done ricochet. It's time to start addicted for now. Best friends, lovers, loners is what it says on the title. Don't remember anything about what happened in this book. Like genuinely, what? I have no idea. I feel like, is this the book where someone drops the ball, the cat's out of the bag? Hello? I would not like that boy if I met him in real life. Because apparently, Aaron, we all remember Aaron. Apparently when he was 16, he slept with Aaron's fraternal twin sister to get back at Aaron. That is disgusting boy behavior. Also, Reich is really that boy, huh? He's really the it boy of this generation because he doesn't even try. He's literally just standing there. But then the sister comes and literally does not say a word. He literally just stands there. And every single girl is like, falling over their feet for him. Okay, but also something that I never got was like, Reich takes every single second that he can to go, oh, like, she's my brother's girlfriend. I mean, you're my brother, 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 brother. Everyone's like, brother, 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 this. They didn't know each other. Like, <laughs> these do not have a brother relationship. Um, Like, it's something that is gonna be built throughout the series, but like, they're barely even friends. Like, they don't even know each other. Like, Halloween was like the first time that they ever really met and like, talked to each other. Like, how are you going to be leveraging your brotherly relationship? Like, it takes more than just blood. The fact that everyone is suspecting Reich to be the blackmailer is absolutely crazy my favorite scenes are just the scenes of like the boys all like running together or like going to the gym together and they're just like having really wholesome brotherly male friendship vibe right reich and Lo are at the track together because reich is captain of the track team if we didn't say that already there's mistrust in our relationship sure but he spends too much time driving me to therapy and hanging out with me to have some ulterior motive he could be uncaring but reich meadows is many things uncaring is definitely not one of them period guys lo is so rude i hate men like that yes he's like nice to lily but he's rude to literally everyone else i don't like that you know what i hate everyone in the world but you trope is great in my head and in fantasy books but if i met one man who exuded that kind of energy in real life it oh it would be one two and it would be over as if i would actually be able to do that okay i'm not gonna lie i kind of forget who this blackmailer is. I think I remember it being Sarah Hale. Wasn't she the one who like ended up spilling the news to the press? These messages don't make sense. It says, I want the satisfaction of hurting you the way you've hurt me. There's no way that this random grown woman is sending that to her son. So who is it? It's not Sarah Hale, is it? Okay, this is really cute. I actually love the low Connor friendship because if you think about it, Connor was actually like the first friend, like actual friend that Lowe ever made. I don't know if I would be right here if he didn't find a way to enter my life in Lily's. He was the first non-judgmental person that I could withstand to be around. I liked having him as a friend. I still do. When a Lord Hale actually swimming in the single most amount of privilege that i could ever see in a character he wants to pay right back for the 40k that he spent on rehab so he's gonna be a model for rose's fashion label i didn't really want to model i still don't but it'll be quick money and this is a chance for me to redo my past mistakes imagine having that kind of privilege the pretty privilege that you can just decide to model to make quick money the most out-of-pocket thing to happen in this book is the fact that Lo goes to his father and tells his father about Lily's sex addiction and everything and that they're gonna work together to find out who the blackmailer is. Honestly, I don't have that much to say about this book. I feel like this was kind of a nothing book that I just needed to read in order to get to the first Catway book. So yeah, let's just get through this. Especially because there's not even Daisy Reich content. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Reich? 
has a girlfriend. I literally forgot. Okay, we'll start a running list of the women that Reich is with until him and Daisy finally get together. This girl's named Melissa. Binge, actually, we're getting our first description about this Melissa girl that he's with. And she's blonde. Lily literally says, Reich's somewhat girlfriend runs her fingers through her blonde hair again. She wears no makeup, which reminds me a little of my youngest sister. Okay, genuinely, one thing about me is that I get the ick when I see men, like, fighting. Like, especially, like, grown men fighting. Like, fist fighting, like, be so for real. However, the only exception is, I've seen Reich throw a punch first to protect me when some guy didn't understand the word no and then to protect daisy at an out of control new year's eve party in fact the only time i've ever seen him be aggressive is when women are treated badly yeah maybe just that one time daisy is here what right goes rigid things just got a lot better in this book once again right is trying to entice daisy into eating a taco and lily and lower witnessing this happen lily is currently being gaslit that nothing strange is happening oh my gosh and then right like, uses his thumb to like wipe sauce off of like her mouth which is a million percent a body. It's raining outside. I actually finished the rest of Addicted or Now last night. But I didn't vlog any of it. I did make notes about the highlights. Yeah, these are the important Daisy and Reich things that happened in this book. Daisy accidentally gets high on absinthe and then Reich comes to her rescue. And then we have that scene where everyone is like huddled up in Reich's apartment after like the news got out. Lily's a sex addict and then paparazzi's like infiltrating their lives and so they're all like holed up in Reich's apartment. And Daisy and Reich are like playing poker. That's when Reich agrees to teach Daisy how to ride the motorcycle. Melissa's a snake. She did this like interview saying all this fake news. Oh, and then Lo and Lily have to get married. I don't know why like everyone thinks that marriage is the solution to a PR disaster, but like Jonathan Hale was like, you two are getting married and they're like, okay. And then Lo finally met his birth mom, Emily Moore, and that woman did not want to be there. It was so brutal. Finally got to meet Willow. She's like younger, obviously. See, she has no idea that Lo, Lauren Hale is her half brother. Lily was literally sexually assaulted by that man, Dr. Evans, like that freaking therapist behind bars. He actually needs jail time. Oh, we see the beginnings of superheroes and scones, which is like that cafe comic book shop. Also, again, like it's only rich people that would ever be able to like just start a business like that because of a passion hobby. I was actually thinking about this because you know that guy on TikTok who's been like talking about like the downfall of the D'Amelios and analyzing from a marketing perspective, like every single influencer's business. I've been eating those up so good. Oh, and I think he's Canadian. And then I was thinking about superheroes and scones. I'm like, I feel like they would not pass, not pass that test. The TikTok business test they definitely would not basically reich is like packing up all of his stuff because he's moving to a new apartment in philly lily and lo are helping them lily finds like this box that was like hate sent to her from someone anonymous and she was like oh my gosh this is the same box what is this doing here and she's like oh my gosh reich has been the snake this entire time but then sarah hale comes and it turns out it was sarah who sent the package she read through reich's text messages and found out about lily's sex edition looked through his phone to get their numbers and was texting them anonymously all to get back at jonathan hale that is like confusing to me because why would she text all that stuff you're literally a grown woman so reich essentially cuts off all contact with his mother and so he's essentially been orphaned because he does not have a good relationship with his father cuts off his mother this man is literally on his own and he's like 23. now we have the first book in the cali sister series which is kiss the sky rose and connor's first book is this the one where they start their own tv show like, that was actually like a wild storyline on this cover it says rivals lovers gods and then there's like that producer who like comes on to rose this is the prologue i literally reread the scene all the time because i think it's so cute and i will pay good money i don't care what i have to give up or like the connor rose prequel story like novella like it doesn't even have to be a novel this little crumb that we get is so good i think he gives her like his blazer or something the girl spilt soda on her i reached the girl's bathroom i pushed open the door and a brunette girl with four inch heels and a conservative blue dress stood by the sink scrubbing a stain with wet paper towel her eyes bloodshot with anger and anxiety i was supposed to be her student ambassador today taking her on a tour of campus before her interview with the dean then i began to shrug off my red blazer what are you doing she asked this is what help looks like she shook her head I don't want to be indebted to you. She pointed another finger at me and stepped back. I know how you work. I get it. You do things for students and they have to pay you back in some sick way. I'm not prostituting people. I held out my blazer. There's not a string attached to this. I'm not expecting anything in return. She reluctantly took the blazer but hesitated. I can't be you, she said. I can't internalize all my feelings. I don't understand how you do it. Our eyes met for an extended moment. There was so much between us that I wasn't ready to uncover right then. I wasn't prepared for the deep conversations that she would force me to have. Rose Calloway couldn't stand me because of what I was. A guy who wanted to reach the top. The irony was that she wanted the same thing. She just wasn't willing to do what I was to get there. I couldn't let her in. I lose the game first and it had only just begun. You're gonna do great. And that was it. She was gone. That is such a good scene. Like I wish that we had all of the build up towards it. Cause I think they've known each other since like middle school. Oh my gosh. 
it is that storyline. She's in a meeting. This freaking guy, his name, Scott, can be the producer of like their reality show. And he's like so creepy. Oh my, this plot is actually so diabolical. <laughs> this man is so weird. This sleazy like Hollywood producer guy who just creeps on Rose all the time. Like doesn't even try to hide it. Like, like she just dropped papers and then he makes her go on her knees and pick them up in a dress. I forgot that this book is sometimes pulling such out-of-pocket random plot lines, but it's okay. All of them are like meeting with a psychic right now, and she's predicting Rose's future, and she literally says, You're very fertile. I sense two strong male spirits in your life, possibly twin boys in the future. And then Rose literally goes on to have twins. So all of them are so bold being like on camera. Literally and low. The PDA, I feel like in the previous books, we were like in their point of view. And so I feel like we didn't like think about it that much, but like now that we're in like an outsider's point of view, those who like actually go at it every single- I'm like- I will not in front of my siblings. Also, I don't know why they make such a big deal about Rose's virginity. Like the way that they televise on on national television, like I would literally cry and throw up. She's stronger than me. Also, Daisy and Reich are in the scene together. So you know that it's my favorite scene. The way that he just casually gave up his spot so that she can like sit and then he sits on the ground. And they're living in the same house. How could I forget that we had another Daisy secret boyfriend reveal? Apparently she's dating someone. I forget who this guy is. I don't even know all their names. The only one that I remember is Julian, but I forget what was happening with him. I'm just gonna say, well, I think everyone else is too afraid to say, which is, is Connor not a sociopath? Like the way that he talks about people and like all he does is like manipulate them, like every person, it ends up changing. Like by the end, he like recognizes the value of like people. Is he not a sociopath? Like he literally says to his mom, love is an irrational feeling. It makes smart people do stupid things. My relationship with Rose is dot 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 stimulating. And then he literally says, I think I'm a sociopath. I need to see Frederick, which is his therapist. He literally is a sociopath, I feel like. I literally forgot about the fact that Connor is literally doing his MBA at this very moment. And he's like pretty much the CEO of a whole company. The scene where Connor gives Rose a lap dance in front of everyone and on international television. Definitely out of all the books, this book is the one that has like the most unhinged chaotic plot ever. Like I don't know what the Richie sisters were thinking there is not enough money in the world that could get me to perform a lap dance or to receive a lap dance in front of my blood relative sisters rose and connor talking to each other in french because no one else can understand them they're pretty much like dirty talking to each other in french in front of every single person and reich cuts in he's like hey no french and we know that reich is actually multilingual fluent but he doesn't tell anyone no one knows but he's secretly been able to understand everything they've been saying this entire time that is so embarrassing like imagine i would never show my face in front of that man again and reich discovered that daisy has a bruise during during their interview part of the show, it's giving touch right, I kill you. It wasn't, a, it was just a random passerby who vandalized her bike and then grabbed her. Oh my gosh, and then Reich took Daisy to the doctor. Actually, everyone heard a yell from Daisy's room. They come in, Reich beating up some 40 year old man, Daisy beating up the camera in her room. And apparently, while she was sleeping, this random paparazzi man broke into her room and started taking pictures of her. And then she called Reich. So, this is the event that gave her PTSD for the rest of her series. I don't know why when I read this for the first time, I don't know if I just like forgot about this scene for some reason, it just like went right over my head. I remember when we get to like Hot House Flower and she's like talking about this and how it gave her PTSD. I was like, when did this happen? Like, did this happen off screen or something? I literally thought this entire time that that happened off screen, this incredibly pivotal canon event in her life. A development in the Connor sexuality development character arc. For me, sexuality is about attraction. Whether it's men, women, it doesn't really matter. He's just vibey. He's just vibey living life. Was it in this book that his sexuality becomes like a huge scandal? Or did I, is that a false memory that I made that up in the book? Oh my God, I was right. The guy's name is Julian. I was remembering right. Like, I'm pretty sure everyone has like a vendetta against freaking Julian. That's why I remember his name. I just forget what he did. He's 23 and Reich is 23. Julian says to Reich, sorry man, you should have started dating her a year ago when she was single. You can have her when I'm done. I can give you the exact date. I'll need about three hours on February 20th of next year. Then you can have her. Mark your calendar. Her 18th birthday. Disgusting. Hey Daisy finally broke up with her boyfriend. Thank God. I'm at the part where I forgot this happened. Rose literally gets punched in the face. What would you do if you literally saw a woman get punched in the face by a man? Like, I'm like, do men not understand that? If you punch with all your force a girl across the face, like, you could kill her low key. Then the unhinged plot to top all unhinged plots ever. Rose and Connor's sex tape gets released. I literally forgot that this happens in this book. I don't know if I could live that down. Rose is taking it like a champ though.